Hey there Islanders and welcome to our 8th editor tutorial video. Today we'll look at grouping and welding. But first off, a small surprise for you, because here under these selected blocks uh, we made a hole in between episodes and added in there the composition with a sword which we made in the last episode. If you'd like to know how to work with terrain, it's very similar to the terraformer in sandbox mode. Uh, we use these two tools. It's easy, we won't be explaining the basic mechanics here. As we said in the first episode, in this series we'll be exploring specific situations. Uh, when we have these blocks selected, uh, we can switch on the gizmo. The last selected piece becomes the pivot of the gizmo, according to which the rest of the selection will behave. It's important for welding and grouping too, because the pivot for a group or weld will be on the last thing we selected. So if I remove this block um, and then just put it back in, the pivot will be there. So let's move it up a bit so we can work with it a tad better. And now we'll have a look at how to make a group or weld out of this selection. So here on the left we see groups and welds. So a weld will literally weld all the items we have selected together. It is easy with blocks, but we have to be careful with anything else so they aren't pickable or don't have an animated interaction. Because in that case they wouldn't have to weld. So for instance, if you want to weld a pirate chest or a tree, it won't work. Um, because they have their own animations. Uh, but other things are absolutely fine and available to weld. If we weld stuff together, which we'll do, a single entity is created. Also a message popped up that it messed a bit with the colliders. Uh, this is because all the colliders blend into each other and only the outer ones stay. Uh, this is also useful to optimize your scenario because colliders are quite needy processor wise and this makes it all run smoother. Now that they are welded together, uh, they also have collective hit points and it will behave like a single entity. But now we can't paint the separate weld pieces. If we want to change the colors, we'd have to unweld the entities, which we'll do anyway. Also, if we weld it back together, we can also edit weld. Then we can work with the separate entities in the weld. We jump out of it by using the escape button. As we mentioned, it is good for the optimization of the scenario, uh, which we can do with the whole scenario uh, by going to export game and uh, using optimize. And then everything that can and isn't in groups or reference will weld together. It's good to do because of houses and other things to boost the performance. Another thing we can do with our selection if we unweld it is to group it. A group is a bit different than weld. Uh, in a group you can have entities uh, but also other welds because uh, you can't weld two welds together. And you can also have game logics in groups. A group, the same as a weld or any entity, can be animated. But in a group you can animate more things at once. Which might be useful. If you'd like uh, to take something out of a group, uh, you can uh, through the edit group function. Then choose one or more items and press remove from group. In the edit mode you can also choose an object in the group to set the pivot to and that will be the new reference point for the gizmo. So another useful thing here uh, is set parent group. If we leave the edit window by pressing escape uh, we see here that we have set parent group. On the off chance that you have more groups, you can set parents to them, chain them together, uh, which will be useful with more difficult animations. 
if we want to animate more groups at once, that for instance, uh, the parent group will spin, uh, but another group inside that spins in the other direction, then this will come in handy. But now let's not confuse ourselves with it. Let's continue with a basic group. Now we'll again break the group, uh, which will select all the entities, and these will weld together. And now we'll try putting a weld and a game logic into one group. We'll add a particle effect. And we'll put it here in the middle. And uh, we'll make it an independent group. Now it's in the group alone. But we can add this weld there by using the add to group button. Uh, we'll click it and choose a group with our dropper. Now let's have a look at the properties of this particle effect. Uh, we'll go into edit group to get to him. And now you can see you can pick directly the particle effect and you're not picking the whole group instead. And now let's look what we can do with the particle effect. It can be animated on its own, you can switch it on and off and you can choose its type. Uh, we have bubbles, dodge effect, drink potion effect, explosions and a lot of other stuff. We'll choose this um, teleport sphere. Here it is. Yeah, here it is. Next, we can choose the scale or size of the effect. We'll choose two. Also, it can have a color you choose. Just check it here and then choose a color, just like we learned earlier. And that's all for today. And wow, we did quite a lot. And uh, now we're ready for the next episode where we'll talk about animators. So, until then, stay classy, Islanders.